and greetings! My name is Joe Lameem and I happen to be a delivery guy. Some would even call me the harbinger of content because that's exactly what I am. Not only do I deliver things to this castle, but I can also go anywhere and deliver things like packages and stuff to those places. And today, we're going right into the castle, right into the action of Super Mario 64. Yes, Super Mario 64, the first Nintendo 64 game ever. On the surface, just another N64 game, right? And, subjectively speaking, not even the best one. Cue the examples. But do you, the viewer, have any idea what has come out of this game's existence? Are you aware of the butterfly effect that this game has had over the years? People have done more with Super Mario 64 than I care to talk about without generalizing. I, I dare say people have done more with Mario 64 than they have with vanilla Minecraft. Is that an exaggeration? Maybe, maybe not. Maybe that's not even true. People have done a lot. Game modders, programmers, entertainers. Me with this video, that that's right. This video is one thing out of Super Mario 64. Yeah. Sounds meta, doesn't it? People have made this game run on PC, emulator, they have Render 96. They've made tools for editing and modding and hacking the game. We have tools, we have color code. People have made mods that run like the game. Some even surpass the limitations Mario 64 had. The limitations the Nintendo 64 console had. I am of course talking about things like Star Road, The Last Impact, Super Mario 64 Land, and those are just the best ones. The list is endless. For crying out loud, there are niches on YouTube based around Super Mario 64, but I'll get to those later. Oh yeah, and it led to Nintendo giving us these other games, and these are just the ones that we could consider in the same series as it. To really understand how Super Mario 64 inspired everything that came of it, we really ought to dig into the game itself. We start at the first thing we see when starting up the game, which is Mario introducing himself. Then we see his face, and we can play around with his face by pressing A and using the other buttons. One face you can make is this face that I ended up making when I was a kid while doing this. It became my favorite face to make with this. After selecting a file, we come to the letter from Peach, followed by Lakitu appearing and some jerky camera movements and Mario coming up the pipe with Lakitu saying some dialogue. Take time to learn the game if we're new to it, then at the bridge we get more dialogue. Good afternoon, the Lakitu Bros here, reporting live from just outside the princess's castle. Wait, Lakitu Bros? There's... Two of you? We, we only ever see one of you. Yeah, me plus the other me that's holding the camera showing this close-up of me. And yeah, there are two of us, and only one of us can be on screen at a time. This includes the mirror room in the castle for however that works. Really? <laughs> Interesting. To think Nintendo would come up with that even then. I mean, unless it was an oversight or something? Speaking of oversights, that glitch where you happen to be at the door right before you show up from the sky, is that your identical brother that you speak of? Whatever you want to believe. Anyway, a seasoned cameraman will be shooting from the recommended angle. Whoa, 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 seasoned cameraman? You, 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 you guys are seasoned cameramen? That's right, me and my clone are seasoned cameramen. <laughs> Super Mario 64's camera movements are infamous for being jerky and flawed! One of the best examples is Tiny Huge Island. I could fall off. Mario could just fall off. That 100 coins mission? Fail! Just because he fell off! Just because of crappy camera movement! And I know this for a fact because I tried the game again. It's hard to enjoy the game like it's a real game again after what it's been through. Let's go inside the castle and I'll elaborate more on this. And here we are inside the castle. Now, as I was saying, I played this game again, it feels more like a medium. It's hard to enjoy the base game now since so many modders out there have done so much with it. Not to mention, there is such a thing as Mario 64 Machinima. And yes, there is a niche for that. There is a niche on YouTube for Mario 64 Machinima. That happens to be another thing that came out of Mario 64. Another result of Mario 64. 
And this is just a short list of some people who either are Mario 64 machinimas, used to be, aren't at all, or sort of use Mario 64 in a way. With that said, it's time to really get into the action. Let's go to Bob on Battlefield. I want to try shooting myself out of a cannon. There are three assured ways I can think of to make Super Mario 64 feel like a real game when you're playing it even today. Method number one, play it on a real N64 console, no Game Shark code. Method number two, if you have Super Mario 3D All-Stars, play it there. Or method number three, play it on Nintendo Switch Online. Here's your box of cannon fuses. So, is the cannon prepared? It's ready to go, hop right in. Now this isn't the first time I've messed around in Bob on Battlefield, but just the other day... Alright, here we are! Smack dab in the middle of the battlefield! Let's go! Hey, stupid Koopa over here! Yeah, I see you! Plus to the King's Mountain Top with no permission. Come back here. Uh oh, I better run. It's outrageous the number of mods there are today. The number of things that we have as a result of Super Mario 64's very existence. It was insane 10 years ago. It's even more insane now. Oh hey, look, it's the floating island. Funny how the game calls it the island in the sky, and yet the, the island's only, what, 30 or so feet off the ground, and, and it's not even the highest point in the entire battlefield. This mountain, this mountain is closer to the sky than that floating island in the sky. So can we really call it the floating island in the sky, the island in the sky, the island 30 feet above the ground? Oh, what the? Oh, no. Okay, so another thing about levels like this one. Levels like bob -omb Battlefield, Womp's Fortress, Dire Dire Docks especially, and Tall Tall Mountain, they're linear in design. Basically, you'd start at the beginning and you'd go directly to one place. Like from the bottom of the battlefield to the top of the mountain. And that's just one example, and in Dire Dire Docks case, from one end of the level to the next. They try to remedy this by having multiple star missions that make you do the same thing, only to have different goals. For example, the Koopa Race, the Added Tower, the Monkey Cage, and all all the crap in the submarine room at Dire Dire Docks, not to mention the extensive bully enemy and boss battles in Lethal Lava Land. So, where am I going with all this, you ask? Well... Space World 95! One of the various sources, aside from the developers themselves, the Space World prototype of Super Mario 64, the beta version, was going to have 30 30 linear levels with one star each. That's why these courses like Bottom's Battlefield and, and Dire Dire Docks are linear. The final game of course had 15 courses with 7 stars each and 15 secret stars, but anyway, with each of those stages being more non-linear, despite the very repetitious missions we got. These non-linear designs would explain why you can reach the top of Womp's Fortress without worrying about sliding walls, floors, or thwomps. The reason you can take other routes to get to the big bullies in Lethal Lava Land. The same is also very true for levels like Rainbow Ride, but not so much TikTok Clock since that level mostly has a linear path upwards with maybe an alternate branch or two plus a branch and a dead end or two. And now, for the sake of having some risky fun, let's go over some more things about the base game. Way to go Mario, way to get there in under 21 seconds! You can't get on this pillar! Actually you can, but it's really hard! But I'm on it! I'm on the pillar! And you're not! How cool is that? The secret aquarium is one level in Mario 64 that you literally cannot spend forever in because there is no air to breathe and your only lifeline are the eight red coins and all the other regular coins. 
which you have to collect and then get the star before you run out of air. Uh oh. Wait a minute. I'm underwater and I'm talking like this. How is this working? Uh oh. Joel and me, what are you doing inside the castle? Oh, hey Mario, I'm just talking to them about Mario 64 and everything that came out of it. Oh, interesting, so what are you doing here? You wanna pound the pillar with me? It's decreed that one shall pound the pillars, but why not make it two? <laughs> that text that it says at the beginning of Lethal Lava Land is actually very good life advice. Except for the last part. But seriously, don't let anyone push you around. But that last part, that, that only applies to Lethal Lava Land. One good thing came out of playing Mario 64 on the Nintendo Switch Online, as opposed to in 3D All-Stars, because we get to hear Mario say, So long, gay Bowser! Even if it is so long King Bowser and not gay Bowser, which Twitter would blow up over something like that. Wow. And they have. They've made memes Bye. about it. Okay, here we are in Wump's Fortress. Uh -huh. We're climbing, we're climbing, we're climbing, we're climbing, we're going around the Wump's. Ah, screw it. Yeah. Uh. All right, here we are at the top. And look, there's Wump King over there. Uh, it makes me so bad. We've got your houses, your castles, we pay the roads, and so you walk all over us. Dude, do you even hear yourself? I know you've been saying that for years, and even in Galaxy 2, but do you hear yourself? Don't you know that's what sidewalks and roads are for? We're supposed to walk over you. That, that's what the sidewalks and the roads are for. So, you never even say thank you. Not once. That's why I'll crush you and that red plumber and everyone else for fun. Wonk King's right. To think I was going to compare him paving our roads to a shy gal showing herself off explicitly. It makes me so mad. We present ourselves. We please you! We put on a show for your pleasure! And yet you treat us like pieces of meat! That's all we are to you! Don't you ever say thank you? No? Then I think I'll blow you up just for fun! But that's the same twisted logic that the Womps have! That the Womp King complains about! Okay, I don't know why I just made that comparison, but I'm gonna make you feel better. I'll be right back! Okay, so, uh, thank you, Womps, for, for building our houses and for, for paving our roads and, and, and for paving our, our sidewalks. Yes, thank you for all that. And I'm sorry that we take you for granted and, and I'm sorry we've been doing that for so many years. And, uh, thank you. We're sorry. I hope we're, we're on better terms now. Now, if you could just give me a sign that, that you and I, that we understand each other, just give me a small sign. Good. Okay, back to Womp's Fortress. There. So, how about it? Are we good now? Yeah, fine. At least this time I don't have to gravel. Er, gravel. Thank you for cheering us up with your appearance, and I'm sorry, please don't blow me up. You're welcome, sweetie. One thing about these boulders is that they always try to get you. Sometimes they fall in such a way that they try to get you. It's so funny how Dory just faces the way Mario is facing. I don't know why they call it the deep freeze. It's a very simple puzzle. The igloo is much more interesting than that. Rainbow Ride is an interesting course. I thought the music that played in Rainbow Ride wouldn't be the slide of music. I thought it would be more like this. Can you imagine the different feel Rainbow Ride would have if it had that music instead of the slider music? In Render 96, which is another version of Mario 64, if you take the mother's baby penguin and throw it off the ledge, then the mother penguin kills you. Did you know that? Well, I got you. Stop! Your baby is fine! That stupid condor! If only this was Shotgun Mario 64, then I could shoot that bird! Falling off in Winged Mario over the rainbow sucks! We have to spend two or three minutes just to get all the way back up there! I would rather just lose a life. The Vanish Cap course is the only course that makes you work for the cap. Every other course is very small! <laughs> and the red coins? Concentrated! And you can push the cap just by hanging over the ledge! I'm gonna hang over it! Boy, push! Uh -huh. Most of that was for 
entertainment purposes since I like to list stuff out. Yeah, let's move on. Now we come to the castle courtyard and look, it's the famous star statue with the engraving on it. The one that says L is real 2401, which hints at, you guessed it, the green man himself, Luigi. We all know Luigi was supposed to be in Mario 64, but more specifically, Mario 64 was to be the next Super Mario Brothers game. The first 3D one, similar to Donkey Kong 64 being the first 3D Donkey Kong game that is a 3D adventure game that follows the Donkey Kong Country series. But I digress, Luigi didn't make it into the final game because, according to the developers, hardware constraints and memory issues. But let's not forget what this star statue here started. That cryptic message that the star statue has, it started so many false rumors about how to unlock Luigi. False! Unlock methods that can easily be brought into a game by a modder. So many gullible people out there tried every which way they could to unlock Luigi, but no, nothing worked. And yet, that star statue is still there. What's its purpose now? Well, Luigi's model is in fact in the game. It's in the game's source code. It wasn't until 24 years and one month after the game came out that someone actually released it, proving once and for all that Luigi does exist. So what purpose does this star statue have now? The person who dumped the source code and proved Luigi was real waited until the 24 year and one month mark to release it because 2401. They waited until that exact time frame to blow up the internet, Twitter, social media, all that, just blow it up because I know how people are, the bottom feeders, the dwellers on Twitter, the, the all the people on the internet. The way the internet is structured nowadays, people will go crazy over the smallest thing. What control do I have over it? I don't. The release of the game Source Code and Luigi finally put those rumors to rest. And now, this star fountain is still here as a reminder of every desperate attempt we've ever tried to get Luigi. Every single attempt that has ever been in vain. It was worth it. In the end, as painful as the journey was, it was worth it. This star statue now stands here as a symbol of our determination, our commitment, finally proving the existence of Luigi in this game and reaching that triumph when we finally realized that we needed to think outside the box. All right, now here's another thing that I want to talk about. And this, oh, 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 this, this is one of the biggest things in Mario 64. This, this is something we simply cannot ignore. Especially now. Especially with what the game initially did to bring us to this state of mind. What better place for me to talk about it than Big Boo's Haunt? <laughs> One of the biggest things to come out of Mario 64 is the freaking horror aspect. I'm not even kidding. There are videos and blog posts all over the place about Mario 64 being a scary game, a horror game, however you would word it. Ever since 2020, stuff about this game that we've never seen before has been popping up everywhere, and it's captured our curiosity and our imaginations. Stuff that people claim was always there that we've never known until now. I'm not just talking about the beta content. One of the biggest contenders here is, wait for it, the Wario Apparition, a giant Wario head that chases Mario down a scary endless hall. Based on fake footage that looks like it came from the 90s to try to fool us, when really it's just a creepypasta fashioned together from Charles Martinet playing Wario back in E3 1996 with the Dire Dire Docs portal. And then we have those 8 dreaded words that come with the apparition. Let's see if you know what they are. Every copy of Super Mario 64 is personalized. It trended on YouTube and other places for a while before other stuff came up, and being overshadowed by that whole L is real thing later on, it's one of those things people go on about. Some just to be weird and mess with our heads. You want more? Show the name, tell you more. <laughs> Every copy of Super Mario 64 is personalized. 
Going back to ROM hacks for a second, of course we made ROM hacks of the game that capitalize on this creepy aspect. The most interesting of these being B3313, which has the same meta creepiness factor as Undertale. It's different every time you play it and emphasizes the whole Mario 64's personalized thing. But I digress. So why would we start all these rumors about Mario 64? Why would we come up with all this stuff that makes Mario 64 more scary and more mysterious than it already is, huh? The answer to that question may be simpler than you think. Super Mario 64 has always been a scary game to begin with. The era of gaming and platforming that it falls into, the way it looks, the way its beta content looks with the quality it could only have in its time, and the way the game was designed, all this piqued our curiosity over the years, and as more beta content surfaced, the perspective on the scary aspect of the game intensified, and then came the creepypastas that obviously didn't help. So why has Super Mario 64 always been scary to begin with? Let's dive into that. You're exploring a nearly empty castle with portals to other places in a low poly world with characters in it that are far and few. Characters like the toads that are found against the walls and appear transparent from far away to give the illusion that they're trapped inside the walls. Characters like Mips the Rabbit in the basement who spouts Alice in Wonderland type references when you catch him. How can he claim he's late for tea and all that Alice in Wonderland crap is all if all he does is, is bounce around and around in the basement in circles and such trying to get away from you. <laughs> That's just trying excuses. Unlike games like Banjo-Kazooie, Donkey Kong 64, even games like Sonic Adventure and Crash Bandicoot, Mario 64 just doesn't have enough charm and personality in it to have its own identity like those games. It doesn't have enough of itself to stand out in our memories like those games do. It is much too devoid of that not to be considered spooky. It's still practically a sandbox game for all that was added to it. The emptiness you feel, the lack of personality and fullness. Compare it to an empty children's playground or a ghost town. They may not seem like the best comparisons at first, but give it time. And it's not just the emptiness either. Some of what they did add also contributes to the horror factor on top of that. I'm talking about things like the chain chomp jumping at you, the eel snapping at you. That mad piano in the other room that attacks you? In addition to those book enemies next to some of the bookshelves. Oh yeah, and some of the music like the music in Boo's Haunt, Hazy Maze Cave, and the Three Bowser stages. You get an off-putting, unsettling, downright horrific experience from what the game doesn't have and what it does have. It's the worst of both worlds! The worst of both worlds! The worst of both worlds! To close this off, I'd even say other people's point of view with the experience they've had with the game are also scary. The things we get from the game, the things we make from the game, the way we express these feelings! It snowballs! It just snowballs and snowballs into this huge scary thing that we have no control over! This huge thing that I can safely summarize with my insanity as intact as it still is in that the scariest thing about Super Mario 64 is not the haunted aspects that it has, like this haunted level. As much as that should be the case when you consider Mad Monster Mansion from Banjo-Kazooie, that was a scary level, but Banjo-Kazooie had such personality and lack of emptiness that literally nothing else about the game was scary. Mad Monster Mansion was scary, all of Super Mario 64 is scary, but they're two different kinds of scary, so remember that. The scariest thing about Mario 64? is the unsettling content and the gaming aspects that we got from it over the years. The things we didn't get, and the things we did get. The way we got them, the uncanny valley, the N64 sprites, the, the pixelation, the, the lack of polygons. It proves that it doesn't take haunting aspects like this to scare us. No, it takes something much, much deeper than that. Something much deeper that digs into our psyche looking for a weakness, looking for something to exploit, eating us up inside. You should really be afraid of it because I may as well be, and maybe I am, and maybe I'm not. How do I know? How do I know? It's really quite an experience, and whether you, the viewer, are in or out of it, it's up to you. Isn't that right, MX? <laughs> Horror aspect of Mario 64 is only a 
fraction of what we call the Super Mario 64 Iceberg. Now granted there's icebergs for a lot of things but of course Super Mario 64 by itself would have one. It has lots of other things that have icebergs that also go deep as icebergs do. Just whatever is closely associated to the base game that you would have to dig for. It is truly amazing how such a simple game like this can have such a complex history and so many secrets rooted as far back as the 90s when the game was first released. The limitations it had, the way the game made us feel, the traces of Uncanny Valley, they're there! I could go on! And so can lots of other people like you. Just when you think we found out everything, everything there is to know about Mario 64, whoops, we find out there's much more! Whoops, it turns out there is still so much more, so much more about Mario 64 that we don't know about. Keep digging game modders and keep digging source code viewers. Keep searching through Super Mario 64 source code. Let's see if even years later we still manage to find anything new. Any new secrets Nintendo is keeping from us. True or false? Actually, if it's false, never mind. Moving on. So, what's left for me to talk about? Oh yeah. Just a few more things about the base game. Once Mario gets through Bowser in the trapdoor room, the Wario apparition, I mean the blue portal room, and the endless staircase room, navigating each of the levels and defeating Bowser at the end of each one, Mario can grab the game's 121st star, which doesn't count towards the star total. Rescue Peach trigger the game's credits, which, depending on the version of the game you're playing, will go at different speeds from the music. The music and visuals were tailored specifically to be in perfect sync when running on a Nintendo 64 console. Anywhere else, even on Nintendo switch and it's not synced at all. This problem even carried over to Mario 64 DS, but we can dive into 64 DS in a different video. Then you reach the end screen, reset the game to reset the status quo of the empty castle, shoot to the roof which has three 1-ups that are much more valuable before 120 stars because of no Yoshi there if you can get to the roof without the cannon. But after 120 stars, get to the roof, meet Yoshi, get 100 lives, not get to ride Yoshi, get the wing cap, maybe try to reach the top of the castle, and just have more mindless fun until you decide to close the game and do something else. Also that fatter penguin somehow got better at sliding from not sliding just because he's fatter now and why am I bothering? with this when I'm clearly wasting your time which I apologize for and I'm just gonna wrap it up now. Super Mario 64 is a sandbox game that had so much more potential than what Nintendo did with it. And over the years, we humans, not just at Nintendo, but all humans that have enjoyed the game over the years, have taken this sandbox game and tapped into all that potential. We made tools for editing it. We made versions of it. We made ROM hacks. Mods. We started rumors about it, we noticed how creepy the game was, an aspect that's been hiding in plain sight for years. We have done so much more with Super Mario 64 than I could ever cover in this one video. So I thank everyone else for getting us this far, not just with unlocking this game's potential, but taking the time to cover each and every part of that potential in great detail. Congratulations everyone and thank you so much for mining this game. This video alone will not give you the insight that you've been looking for. But, 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 don't say I wasted your time. Don't say I wasted your time. I did it. Hopefully I at least did provide you with some information. Hopefully you learned something from this video that you didn't already know. And even if not, did you enjoy seeing me suffer? If you didn't learn anything, did you at least enjoy seeing me suffer the way Mario suffered inside this game? Seriously! I am- I was inside the game for crying out loud! I, I wasn't just talking about Super Mario 64, I lived it! Because that's what I do, I'm Joel Amin and I can go anywhere and I don't just talk about stuff, I live it! And because I'm a delivery guy, I deliver packages. Remember that! Remember that for future videos, okay? Good. And sorry for, for, for coming off obnoxious there. I'm Joel Amin, it's what I do! Get used to it, I guess. Anyway, if you really want more insight, if you really want a better understanding of everything we got out of Mario 64, check out other videos on YouTube that have to do with things like Mario 64 hacking, Mario 64 machinima, hacking, mods, tools, and, and all that other stuff. Then you, the viewer, will really get an understanding of everything out of Super Mario 64 the way I did. But if you want to see more of me, Joel Amin, going other places, talking to NPCs, 
fantasies, visiting video game world, that sort of thing, because it's what I do, because I'm Joe Lamine, delivering packages, then like this video, comment below, and subscribe for more Joe Lamine content. Oh, speaking of Joe Lamine content, check this out!